Welcome back to the channel. My name is Douglas and in front of me is the MPC Key 61. Now, if you've watched videos on my channel, especially the ones around the Nord Stage 3, you'll probably know that I play a lot of church music and lead worship, play on my local worship team here at church. I've been doing that for a decade, decade and a half now. And when the MPC Key 61 came out, one of my first thoughts was, could I use that in church? Would this be an option? So, I mean, churches use a lot of different keyboards to accomplish what they're trying to, you know, their objectives for their keyboard side of the stage or piano or whatever it is. And, you know, whether it's a main stage and controller setup or something like the Nord Stage 3, the Nord Stage 3 for me is my main keyboard and I think it's fantastic for live use. So my thought was, hey, could this be an option for churches that are trying to get into, maybe you don't have a keyboard section of your worship team and you're trying to build that out. Could this be an option or could it be an option to replace maybe a more legacy keyboard that you're using? So now that I've been able to spend some time with the MPC Key 61, I brought it to church to one of our rehearsals and kind of just tried it out, messed around with things. I wanted to share some thoughts as you know, could the MPC Key 61 be a valid option for using it in church? Because I know a lot of you guys have been wondering, I will be doing comparisons against the Nord Stage 3, which is going to be cool because the Nord Stage 3 is, you know, almost a $4,000 or over $4,000, depending on which version you get. And the MPC Key 61 falls just below 2000 So, if for a keyboard that's almost double the cost of the MPC Key 61, I'll tell you ahead of time that this definitely holds its own. Um, there are some little things, and I'll touch on some of those in today's video. So enough talking. Let's jump to the MPC Key 61 here. Let's just open an empty project because I want to walk you through a few kind of concept type things with playing in a worship team and kind of what's helpful when you're a keyboard player. Um, to be able to call up sounds and, and things like that. So if we think about sounds, let's start there because this has over 6,000 sounds. So it rivals a lot of the other workstations out there, main stage, you know, whatever you're using, this kind of fits from a spec standpoint. But how do the sounds fit in a worship type setting? So if you think church music, uh, you're going to have piano. Piano is a very common, probably the most common instrument used. Electric piano, some organs. Uh, strings, synth pads, those are kind of your staple instruments. And then as you get into the Christmas season, there's bells, right? There's some other things that come in. So from strictly a sound perspective, let's just walk through a few of those here. So pianos, let's go here. And if we go to edit instrument, we can tweak this however we want. But if you think about, you know, studio versus live use, live use, you're going to be setting up your sounds and then you're going to be playing them. For studio, you have the chance and the time to pick sounds, mess around with them. That's something you're going to do ahead of time or during rehearsal, but chances are you're not going to really have the time during rehearsal. So before we do this, let's kind of do two things at once. So if we go back to our sounds page and we tap on this key ranges button, this gives us our layers and our splits. Similar if you're familiar with main stage or some of the other software that's built for live use, this allows us to have multiple tracks referencing multiple instruments and allows us to um, mute them or unmute them very quickly here. So we can start off with all of them muted except one, and then we can alternate between those, or we can just cycle through them here if we don't want to layer them. So this is probably the best way within the MPC Key 61 right now to have multiple sounds called up at the same time and have the ability to layer them. You have to think a little bit differently with the MPC Key. Because the interface is set up more like a DAW, you have to set up all your tracks. So I may have, let's say I have five programs I use at church commonly. I have a piano and a string, a piano and a pad. I have an electric piano by itself. I have an organ by itself. And then I have maybe a synth pad by itself. Or what I'll do is I'll use the piano and pad or the soft piano and pad, and I'll just pull the piano out and use the pad sound there. So when we think about it in that respect, I'm using a soft piano, a piano, electric piano, organ, and synth pad. I'm using five sounds, using them across five different programs in five different ways. Some layered, some split, things like that. So if you think about it from that respect, while I don't necessarily have five programs I'm switching between on the MPC Key 61, I can set up 
my five sounds here. And we're gonna do that right now. So we're gonna set the five tracks up as our five independent sounds. And then I'll show you how you can kind of layer them and stuff on the fly. So let's go back to our tracks and let's, let's cover piano first. So we have piano. I'm sure you're wanting me to get playing here. I'm gonna rename my plugin to piano as well. And we'll do a piano and then we'll do a soft piano on track two. That way we have those two together. So on here, we have our stage piano. And if we go into our edit here, it jumps right into the edit instrument for this piano. So let's go with this one and let's go to track two. So you can tap on track, scroll, and let's name this soft piano. So this will give us two piano options that we can kind of switch between as we're playing. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do the same thing on the plugin instrument. Now the reason we're naming both of these the same is because depending on where you are in the MPC key, it shows the different names. So if we go into edit, um, I actually wanna pick the piano for this track too. And then we're gonna go into edit. And instead of real for our style, we're gonna go soft. And we are going to go over to our reverb and we're gonna bring in just a little bit more reverb on this soft piano here. So we're gonna go with that. If we go back to our key ranges, and you can get to that by hitting sounds and then tapping key ranges, you'll notice our first two tracks are already showing up here, piano and soft piano. And we can just tap on them. And then we can play these and we can move between them by using these buttons, by using the encoder, or by touching on the screen. So regular piano, maybe we're ending the song. something like that. And then when we get to the next song, we can come right in. And we can switch between them. And if you'll notice, it was seamless transition. So thing it has trouble with is the sustain pedal. So if I'm holding the sustain pedal, when I switch sounds, it's not being held for that next sound. So watch what happens here. Holding the sustain pedal, switch. It doesn't sustain track two's notes. Maybe there's a setting in there that can carry over. Uh, the other thing that you could do is just kind of when you switch, use the sustain pedal to switch um, or touch the sustain pedal to re-trigger that for track two. Then you lose track one. So a little bit of a sticking point there, but something you can kind of get used to and work around. So let's go back to our tracks and that's our regular piano, our soft piano. Let's set up an EP and then we're gonna go into our sounds. I'm gonna pick our stage EP. I will say from a sound perspective, this does not lack at all. Like it, it provides way more sound possibilities than even the Nord Stage 3. The quality of sounds will be determined when we do those comparison videos, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. So we're gonna go in and let's just go to our instrument here. Yeah, let's go with that. So now, again, if we go back to our key ranges, we have our electric piano, so we have our piano. easy to switch between them, right? But it's a different concept than switching programs. Now, if we go back to our track and let's go to track four and let's throw an organ in here. A lot of sound preference comes in when it comes to keyboard. Some people love the Roland, the Yamaha, the Korg. Um, this has its own sound style, right? So we're gonna go in, pick organ. Let's go in and pick, I don't know, one of these gospel ones. <laughs> Let's 
If we go into edit, we can see our draw bars. So there's our organ, and again, if we go back to our key ranges, we now have our organ. So we're gonna go in and add a new plugin track here, and we're gonna throw some strings on there. We're gonna do a second or a another one as well. So let's go to track five. So we're gonna go into our sounds, studio strings, orchestral, slow strings, and we're gonna go, I like to bring the ambient reverb up just a little. Use a modulation wheel to kind of swell it in a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So let's go back and let's set up one more track. And for this, let's go into fabric and let's choose a slow pad. And let's just pick a pad here. Um, let's go with this one. I like that. Kind of bring it in. There we go. Now, one cool thing with Fabric XL is it's one instrument, but it allows you to layer two sounds. So while I won't get into that in this video, I do have another video where I talk about the Fabric XL instrument and it, it kind of gives you an extra layer of um, sound capability that you could put into one sound, but then you could layer and you could actually use this almost in the same way we're using our key ranges. So let's go name this our pad sound. We're gonna go with that. So we go into our key ranges and we have all of these instruments, right? So we can scroll through them. Let's say we want to layer these because now we get into where, you know, on the Nord Stage 3, we'd set up programs for each of our different combinations. While we don't have that here, and we do in a way, and I'll talk about that, but you would set this up at the beginning. Maybe these are your favorite sounds you use in every worship set. And so now what we can do is we have two options. We can hold shift and we can tap on the instrument arm buttons that we want to play together. So maybe we want electric piano, strings, and pad all layered at the same time. Now it's muddy because they're too loud. So we can tap on this little eye icon. And then as we tap through our tracks, we can change the volume of those tracks here. So maybe we bring our piano or our strings and our pad down. And then when we layer those together, or we layer our pad, so we have the ability to tweak some things, not as convenient as twisting a knob, reaching up, and you know, the Nord Stage 3 is a little bit more versatile in that effect. But let's talk about one more thing while we're here. So if we arm all of our tracks, we now have, and we have these normally, but having them all armed allows us to mute very quickly, mute and unmute the tracks here. So maybe we have piano. We wanna bring the strings in.
aftertouch, use a little modulation wheel. As you can see right there, I was able to switch between our sounds. In our case, we have the six sounds that we can switch between and on the fly make our programs. So that's how you have to kind of think about it here. If you like that, then sound wise, this is probably gonna work for you. One thing I didn't really talk about here is splitting extremely easy to modify those splits. If I can actually grab those little endpoints, <laughs> I could also tap on learn min, learn max, and actually press the key. And it'll start the beginning and end points. And then I can slide these all around. So similar to how main stage works is if I want the soft piano up here. It was way up there. Um, you can see this is set up for 88. Because I'm 61, I have this range here. So that being said, hopefully that gives you a good idea of the sound capabilities of the MPC Key 61. Obviously, we didn't dive into all the sounds, but these are some of our staples here. And by arming them all, you know, we were able to layer them together, or you can just play one at a time. Similar to if you use maybe a digital piano or, or an older synthesizer where you just have to switch sounds. And sometimes there's a favorites button. In this case, we set up all of our favorites and we can just scroll through them. If that's how you use it, this absolutely fits the bill, right? Um, but if you're setting up complicated programs with splits and layers and effects and all of that, and you might have all six of these in one program, that's where it gets a little bit tricky because there is this functionality called set lists, which we can get to by double tapping on this performance, switches over to our set list. In set lists, we can actually pick projects. So what we set up here with our six tracks is considered a project. It's unnamed, untitled right now, but we could set up, you know, projects here. So if I go into my main, you know, we could save what we just configured, the six sounds, if we put some effects on them and stuff, could save that as a project, right? And then we could actually pick those projects as um, tiles here in our set list. So let's say you did have five programs that you switch between. You could set up five projects, insanely complex projects, right? Because you have the ability to do multiple tracks, effects, mixing, all sorts of different things inside one project in the MPC Key 61 more than you could get in a program in, let's say, the Nord Stage 3. But here's the kicker. If I choose a project here, I'll just kind of show you this. Choose project, and let's go in and choose this one here. So we're gonna select that. So we could tap on that. It says, do you wanna replace everything in memory? We're gonna say yes. And maybe 30 seconds was an exaggeration because that loaded up pretty quickly. You'll see it does like a double loading thing though, and that, you know, I think that's still too long in between songs to switch. Maybe if you just have a couple of little sounds and stuff picked, it might load up faster, but you still have to go here and load up that project. And I mean, that takes too long unless you're not starting off the next song. So I don't really see that as a good option. What I see as the best option right now for the MPC Key 61 is to use this Key Ranges page, set up your favorite sounds, switch between them. One other thing that I wanted to talk about here is sometimes churches, and we don't do this in our church, but there are churches that use either background tracks or loops, riffs, things that you wanna trigger. That's where this really starts to shine is the ability to set up a drum program and trigger loops and sounds and all of that from the 16 pads or by setting up sequences and tracks and starting to make it a bit more complicated. Sometimes your drummer has these responsibilities, but if it's falling on you to trigger some of these stems or loops and things like that, you could definitely do that from here as well. Again, if you have to switch programs or projects, that's where it takes the time to load. So my hope is that over time, the MPC Key 61 is going to become more versatile as a live keyboard. It's probably gonna fit the bill for a lot of you that use keyboards in churches. For me, I'm still trying to figure out where it fits with the Nord Stage 3 because the Nord Stage 3 is my main keyboard and I, I love how it functions. And so I'm trying to figure out how this fits 
with that because the sounds on there are my go-to sounds. So I'll be doing those comparison videos between this and the Nord Stage 3, talking about the sounds and the functionality between the two keyboards. So if you're trying to decide, you know, does it make sense? I think it's great because you get the 61 keys, you get the controls, you know, you could use it to control main stage, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having a sole keyboard. So lots of sounds, that's not a problem there. So it's really just where it comes to sound switching that takes a little bit of setup. Once you're set up, you're probably good to go unless you do more complex setups and that's where it kind of falls short a little bit. My hope is that over time, they're very good at releasing firmware and hopefully they'll come out with some firmware releases that add additional functionality in here to maybe store more sounds in memory or have the ability to switch faster or even come up with a brand new functionality for programs where you can set them up and switch seamlessly between them. That would be awesome. Let me know what you think. Uh, this video was a lot longer than I anticipated it being, but I wanted to walk through kind of the setup for live use or church use. Uh, so what do you think? Do you think that you know, either based on this video and what you've seen and heard or your experience with the MPC key, how does it fit into a live scenario? What do you think? Do you think this works for church? Do you think this is a valid option for churches that either want to get into keyboard or are trying to replace what they already have or maybe adding it in addition? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below or if you have any questions, throw those down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. Stay inspired keep making that music.